Love Dear Church. Pastor Mary here from Peace Lutheran Church, Springfield, Illinois. This is the second Sunday of Advent, and today we'll hear from our Old Testament lesson, God's Word of Comfort to All God's People. This morning during drive through communion, we will be collecting for our Christmas baskets that will be sent out. We are collecting chicken noodle soup and tomato soup. Also, we have a tradition here at Peace of providing gifts for the children at Blackhawk. So tomorrow when you come through drive through communion, you'll, be, you'll have an opportunity to choose a child and a gift that you would like to uh, provide. Christmas Eve services will be virtual. They will be online. We plan to premiere our service at 4.30 or 4 o'clock p.m. on December 24th. And then we invite you all to the parking lot at 5.30. And at 5.30, we'll have a communion service. Uh, and we'll also have an opportunity to hold candles and sing Silent Night together. So put that on your calendar and uh, plan to join us. Welcome to worship. I invite you to join me for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin in spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Next we'll read Psalm 85 responsibly. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who hear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from the heavens. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. during this Advent season, awaiting the coming of Messiah. Make us aware of Messiah's presence among us even now. Fill us with hope that we might go forth to bring words of comfort to a weary world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I could be wrong, but I'm guessing I'm not alone in feeling a bit of COVID weariness. Tired of the isolation, tired of Zooming, weary and tired of wondering what is safe. 
And then add to that the normal stress and craziness of the holiday season. Figuring out how to do Christmas services safely. Hoping that parishioners and family and friends are staying safe. Praying. Praying for those who are facing illness during this holiday season, for those who find these days difficult. Sometimes, sometimes I just need some comfort. What about you? What comes to mind when you hear the word comfort? What sorts of things give you comfort? I mean, with everything that this year has thrown our way, what brings you comfort? Where do you turn? I turn very often to my dogs, Gospel and Mercy. When I've had an especially stressful day and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed by circumstances, it's a joy and a comfort to go home and to open the door and have both of those guys just looking at me and happy that I'm home. It brings me great comfort to have them with me. For some people I've talked to this past week, it's that bowl of ice cream, chocolate in particular. I know as a child, chocolate ice cream was my go-to comfort food. Chocolate ice cream with a scoop of peanut butter on it. In fact, food was most often the answer when I asked people what gave them comfort. But then again, there were also others who said it was a cup of coffee from Starbucks that got them through. It brought them comfort in the midst of these stressful days. I also talked to a friend of mine from seminary and she told me that it was being outdoors in nature that when life just seemed a bit overwhelming, it was being out in creation that brought great comfort and joy to her. And then, of course, for Spencer, a member here at Peace, it's giraffe, his little stuffed giraffe, which he's had since he was an infant. I got introduced to giraffe when I first came here as pastor. His mother told me that I would be, should be careful which one of the legs I touch because let's just say everything was a little sticky from Spencer's loving on giraffe. But giraffe has gone everywhere with Spencer. In fact, Amanda, his mom, said that he recently asked if she would put some more stuffing in giraffe because he was getting a little flat from all the, the comfort he was offering Spencer. Honestly, I think we could all use a giraffe to carry around with us when we're feeling a little overwhelmed. So a question for us this morning, who during this Advent season might need comfort? Who in our community might need that little bit of extra? Who in our family might be needing some comfort during these difficult days during this holiday season. You know, is Aunt Susie needing some extra reaching out to? Who in our family needs comfort? Who in our church family might need a special bit of comfort extended to them? I mean, here at Peace, we can feel pretty good, I think, about offering comfort to our community. And it feels good to offer comfort to others. Here at Peace, during this time of pandemic, we have had food drives. We continue to stock the micro pantry at Springfield High School. We filled Thanksgiving baskets that were given out. We're in the process of filling Christmas baskets. We also provide gifts, Christmas gifts, for the children at Black Hawk. People from Peace have reached out to one another, to their church family, and into the community via emails, and phone calls, and text messages. All good stuff. 
comfort to those in need. But what about this? How do you feel about offering comfort to someone who, well, got themselves in the spot they're in on their own? You know, made poor decisions. For many, it goes against our sensibilities. It goes against our sense of right and wrong to help those people. They got themselves in the situation. They can get themselves out of it. We might even be tempted to withhold our assistance and comfort. We may even choose to judge. Which makes this lesson that we hear from Isaiah this morning that much more amazing. The first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah are filled with the prophet prophesying relentlessly to the people, speaking of their sin, their sins that are appalling. The prophet Isaiah speaks to the people of, of, of um, Israel and it says, you have turned your face from the care of the poor. You've refused to care for the widow and the stranger and the foreigner. The prophet goes on and on relentlessly for 39 chapters, pointing out to the people how they have turned from God, how they have refused to be the people God has created them and calls them to be. They simply would not put God first in their lives. And so, as a consequence of their sin, they find themselves in exile, far away in Babylon, in this, this unfamiliar place. They've been taken from their homes and families. They're in a place where they find no comfort. They have seen their temple destroyed. They no longer have a place to gather for worship. They find no place to find comfort from God. The people who sit in this exile, having gotten themselves there because of their behavior, wonder, has God forgotten them? Has God turned God's back on them and left them? They are weary. And then along comes this word of hope. After years and years in exile, God calls upon the heavenly court and says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. I don't know if you caught that small two-letter word in what I just read. It's a word that drives home the sense of hope for these people who are languishing and weary in exile. Listen again. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. My people. It is God's people that sit in darkness and in exile. It is God's children, God's beloved children, the people who God has formed that sit in exile. And like children, they misbehaved. But God has not given up on them. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. A messenger is sent to announce to the people that their time of exile has come to an end, that they will return to their home. But the people must wonder, even if we are free from exile, how 
How will we make it back home through the wilderness? The wilderness stretches in front of them and they wonder how they will make a way. How will they get through the wilderness? It's like a relationship. When a relationship is broken and severely damaged, it's like standing in front of a wilderness and wondering how will we ever come together again? How will we ever mend what has been broken? How will we get through and navigate that wilderness? And yet in the book of Isaiah, we hear that it is God who will make a way for the people, that the paths will be made straight, that the mountains and valleys will be leveled. And, and God will come, and God will come to them with outstretched arms, not as an angry God, not as a God demanding judgment, but God will come, Isaiah tells us, as a shepherd who tenderly cares for the sheep, who stoops the sheep up and puts them on his shoulder and carries them in his arms. God will come to them in their exile as a shepherd who understands their weariness. And God will bring them home. What good news to a people who have sat in exile. What great comfort. This holiday season in the midst of a long pandemic that shows no sign of giving up any time soon. We too can feel very much like a people in exile. Our sins didn't get us here. The pandemic is not a punishment for our sins, let's be clear. But here we are, separated from one another, separated from our place of worship, separated from, from normal. And during this, during this time, during this Advent time, we are more acutely aware of our brokenness and our sin. We demand our personal rights and tempers flare when we don't get what we want. We point fingers and assign blame. Families during this time are fractured. Our country remains deeply divided. In many ways, we are like people taken into captivity, captive to our own sin, stuck in our own brokenness. Where do we find where do we turn for comfort in days such as this? When the mountains of sin seem so high, and when the valleys of depression and separation and anxiety seem so deep, where do we find comfort? When the days are short and the nights are long. There is good news this Advent season. It comes to us from the words of Isaiah, words spoken to an ancient people, words spoken to God's beloved people even today. Comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. In this Advent season, we call to mind that our Messiah, our Savior, has indeed come in our midst, has come to us in the flesh of a newborn child and a lowly manger. Our Messiah has come to us, has hung high on the wood of a cross and died, and then rose on the third day that we too would have life. Friends, no matter how far we have wandered from God, no matter how broken we are or think we are. And though we are like grass that withers and flowers that fade, God's word has been announced to us. And God's word stands forever. In Jesus Christ, 
we are forgiven and made right before our God. The mountains are leveled and the valleys filled in. Our Messiah has come. Our Messiah is present with us even now in the middle of a pandemic, bringing comfort for all God's people. And Messiah will come again and will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry us in his bosom. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, Comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the faith of creation, where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend our wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, justice, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make an even ground smooth. Make even the disparities, disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for our world accessibly to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. 
Him those who are sick and struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy Lord. chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At the end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, we pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat, and drink. Your boundless mercy strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for God's blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.